So in our final video series on membranes and transport, we're going to be looking at the bulk transport of large molecules to conclude our discussion on transport of molecules as a whole. So we'll entitle this flowchart just that, bulk transport specifically of large molecules. So it's a bit of a long title but it's a good title because now we can dissect it through our flowchart format. So, a couple of key rules when we're bulk transport. That means lots of long, uh, that means lots of transport. Bulk meaning, you know, a good amount, a very strong amount of stuff being transported, specifically what stuff? Large molecules. So what do we do? We always need cell energy. This is a sort of a rule. You have to have lots of cell energy. So we always need cell energy for bulk transport of large molecules. Specific type of cell energy is of course ATP. That's the currency that we use in cells. Thus we're always going to utilize active transport AT in this situation. And one sort of caveat is that this is not carrier mediated actually. It's absolutely not carrier mediated because there is no use of transport proteins. So no transport proteins are used. Carrier mediator, remember, something has to mediate. That was the use of a transport protein, whether it was integral or whether it was transmembrane. There are no transport proteins involved in these types of transport of bulk large molecules. So no transport proteins. So now, what do we use? How does it happen? Well, there are two basic types of bulk transport. And we'll go over both of them. So, oops, we'll say not bulk, but two types. Two overarching types. The first one's very easy. It's called exo, which means outside or the exterior. Cyto, which means cell cis. Cis just refers to a process. So this I like to think of as spitting out of the cell, taking out of the cell, because we're going exo, out of cell process. So what do we do in this situation? First of all, this is passive active. Of course, it's active because it's a type of bulk transport of large molecules. It has to follow all three of these stipulations. So as an active transport sort of mechanism, it's going to involve two major components. It's going to involve vesicles, and there's the vesicles again. What membrane system did we see vesicles come a uh, big role in? And that was, of course, the endomembrane system. It had a lot to do with those vesicles. And But this time, the vesicles are going to be a combination in combination, in sort of um, continuous reliance with the plasma membrane or cell membrane. So these vesicles, what's going to happen is they're going to have waste in them. Or they might even have um, some sort of a secretory product. That basically means a product that needs to leave the cell and get to, let's say, a different area. Let's say it's a hormone. You need that hormone to go from your brain into, let's say, the reproductive system to ensure that the reproductive cells are correctly being made. So you're going to create a vesicle, or let's say you have waste within the cell that needs to be released, and you're going to combine it with the plasma membrane. When you combine it with the plasma membrane, you have a series of reactions and sort of processes that occur. Overall, all you need to know at the level of general biology is that this combination of vesicle with waste or secretory product and plasma membrane leads to the eventual release. So this stuff that's within the vesicle is released to outside of cell. Because why? This is exo outside cell cyto cis outside of cell process that's all exocytosis is vesicle plus plasma membrane come together but what do you do you spit out whatever is within those vesicles the next type of bulk transport of large molecules so remember these things this waste and secretory product these are large molecules within these vesicles and a large amount of those large molecules within these vesicles being spat out so it makes sense that you want to take all the waste and put it into one vesicle so that you can take get rid of it in one shot. That's the whole idea of bulk transport. So think of it like a, imagine just you know the way that you collect garbage as you know in any household. You don't constantly throw out garbage. It's inefficient. What do you do? You collect it into a large bin and then you throw it out once that bin is full. Same idea with cells. 
So it's a bulk transport. So the next type is endocytosis. And we'll do one type of endocytosis in this video, and then we'll do the other two types in the next part to this video. So the one type of endocytosis we'll do here, actually before we do that, let's just define it. Endo means inside, so going into or the inner part of the cell process. So this is now not going to be releasing things, but actually taking things in, bringing a large amount of large molecules in. So we're going to define this as a process in which materials are taken into the cell, so taken into cell via vesicles, there they are again, from plasma membrane. So it's sort of the opposite of this. It is the exact opposite. Instead of the vesicles and plasma membrane combining to spit out something, a vesicle will combine with the plasma membrane to, let's say, eat something, for a lack of a better phrase. Speaking of eating, we're going to talk about the first type of endocytosis. There are three types. The first type that we'll talk about, and we'll end our video on this, is called phago or phagocytosis. So again, cytosis means a cell process. Phago comes from the Greek root that means to eat. Okay, So this is literally defined as cell eating. This is how a cell is going to ingest large particles. Cell ingests, that means takes in, large particles. So what does this process involve? It involves three key steps that all phagocytosing cells utilize. The first step is that a fold of the plasma membrane, fold of that plasma membrane actually is going to enclose a particle. It's going to open up, it's going to see a particle that it likes, and it's going to, um, it encloses uh, a particle. So it sees it's something that it wants to eat. It wants to phagocytose, phagocytosize. So what's it going to do? It's going to form a vesicle around it. Form vesicle around it. So that's its goal. And once it's done that, that vesicle now is going to do something. That vesicle, the next step, and you can put it right underneath here, um, vesicle is now going to, it pinches off into cell. So one thing that I want to mention about this idea of phagocytosis and even endocytosis and exocytosis as a whole, again, this is where the flowchart format of learning is a bit limited in that it's hard to visualize this unless you see videos. And I highly, highly suggest that you go to the playlist and watch the associated playlist for this lecture series because you will see phagocytosis happening within a cell in a much clearer form that's going to sort of easily allow you to understand what's going on in these sort of wordy definitions. So back to the definitions. The vesicle is going to pinch off back into the cell and once it does that, it fuses with the lysosome, with lysosome. Remember the lysosome is that part of the cell that's in charge of taking vesicles, whatever vesicles come in, combining them together, and then breaking down because it's the lysosome. It lyses things. It's the body that lyses things. The main major example you should definitely know that phago, that is very good at phagocytosis are white blood cells. White blood cells, WBCs, are a part of your immune system. Personally, I've done research within an immunology laboratory and I'm absolutely fascinated by immunology. I cannot wait till we get to it at Bio2. But this is an amazing part of your immune system. White blood cells, they scavenge around your body and they look for foreign invaders and what they do is they're literally born and raised to make sure to find a foreign invader, phagocytosize it, and then ingest it and then just absolutely destroy whatever just been ingested. That's the way that the immune system sort of fights off foreign invaders that aren't supposed to be there. It's called phagocytosis and it's a type of endocytosis and that's a good way of bulk transport of large molecules. So these are our two types, exo and endo. We'll finish off our next video as a part two to this bulk transport of large molecules and finish with the last two types of endocytosis.